Uh, kia ora and welcome to our demand explanation today. Uh, you've got your teacher, Mr. Pietzkiewicz, uh, bro sir, is my other name, and Mr. Teddy. Mr. Teddy is a very famous economist and he also supports the Breast Cancer Foundation. Isn't just that amazing? I thought so too. So if you have any questions, ask me or ask Teddy. He's smarter, way smarter, trust me. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to be looking at what is the difference between quantity demanded and demand. Fantastic, I'm excited. So we'll be focusing our demand on ice cream, because I know you all love ice cream. I love ice cream. Cool, we ready? Quantity demanded. The relationship between price and quantity demanded only. Okay. That's what this relates to, okay? It's the relationship between price and quantity demanded. Fantastic. Okay, it relates to a movement along the demand curve. So if we go back, okay, it's going to it's going to result in a movement along it this way or this way. Sweet. Okay, so if the price of a good or service changes, then we know we are dealing with a change in the quantity demanded. Isn't that right, Teddy? Yeah? Sweet. Okay. Quantity demanded. And a movement along the demand curve, okay? Remember price. Get that in your head. Price. Quantity demanded. Okay. When we illustrate the changes on the demand curve, all right, we're going to use Ceteris Paribus at all times. Okay. It's a... Latin phrase, which means that all other things being equal or held constant. Okay, because we know in economics that the economy is actually very complex. Every second there's things happening left, right, center. Okay, but when we illustrate these changes, we should keep in mind, okay, ceteris paribus. Cool? Okay, ceteris paribus. Keep that in mind. Okay, so here's our demand curve for ice cream. What do we have here? We've got quantity demanded on the x-axis down here. Okay, we've got price per liter on the y-axis. Here's our demand curve. Make sure you label your curves, okay? Easy marks for NCA. D, S. This curve here is your demand curve. This curve, supply. Easy. Q1, okay, label it. Boom, boom. When the two curves intersect, that is called the equilibrium. Oh, that ice cream looks so good. <sighs> mm. Okay, so when the two curves intersect, that is equilibrium. Awesome. Let's label it Q1 and P1. Okay, make sure you label your axes too, okay? Label it. It's all worth points, marks. All right. Also, make sure your demand curve has a title. Make sure. Easy marks, guys and girls. Okay, so here's our scenario for quantity demanded. Okay, so the price of ice cream increases. Okay, so we know, based on what we've just read, okay, that quantity demanded is the relationship between price and quantity demanded only. And there will be a movement along the demand curve. Okay, so we also know that if the price of a good or service increases, okay, so the price of ice cream goes up, that there's a high probability that the demand for that good or service will decrease. Okay, that's just common sense, really, isn't it? It's called economics. <laughs> okay, so this is, is commonly referred to as the law of demand. Oh, sorry, Teddy. Okay, so let's illustrate that. So look, we've got the price going up here. See, the price is going up. Quantity is going down. Okay. Draw it on your graph like this. Boom. 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 And boom. Okay. Q1 is going to Q2. So the quantity de demanded is decreasing. And the price is increasing. Okay. That's exactly like the law of demand. Okay. Remember, price is quantity demanded. Okay, boom. Ice cream, yum. 
Demand now. Okay, there are countless factors that could affect an individual's willingness and ability to purchase a good or service. There are millions of factors, okay? We're going to cover some of them. So an increase in demand. Remember, it's not demand. Sorry, remember, it is demand, not quantity demanded. Okay, so it's going to result in the whole demand curve shifting to the right. We'll show it shortly. Okay, cool. A decrease in demand. Remember, it is demand, not quantity demanded. Okay, this will result in the whole demand curve shifting to the left. Cool. So what causes an increase or decrease in demand and a shift to either the left or to the right? Let's have a look. Cool. So here are some factors that affect demand. We have changes in income, changes in taxes, advertising, substitutes. Don't know if you can do that with an apple and a cream donut. I'll choose a donut. Is that a donut? Don't know. Okay. Compliments. Okay, a shoe and a CD player. They should go together. That's a pretty badass shoe. I love it. Okay, and tastes and preferences. Okay. So tastes and preferences. So if the fashion tastes go up, you know, if people start to prefer ice cream, okay, because it's awesome. I love ice cream. You do too. Come on. Okay. Awesome. So these are some of the factors that affect demand. Notice how nothing in here is to do with price. Yeah. Okay. So, consumer expectations. So, if you expect the price of ice cream is going to increase in the future, you'll buy it now, wouldn't you? Yeah? And also, if you think you're going to receive more money in the future from your job, you're going to buy more. Okay. We all love shopping. So remember, important to remember. Boom, there we go. Oh, more ice cream. Love it. Okay, what affects demand? Does not relate to the price of the good or service we are demanding. Okay, the price for the ice cream used in our previous example, that relates to quantity demanded. Cool. So here's what can increase demand. Okay, income. An increase in income. Decrease in direct taxes. Direct taxes are taxes on your income. Okay, a decrease in price of a complement good or service. So a complement good will be example like chocolate sauce that goes with your ice cream. Okay, if that chocolate sauce goes down in price, you're probably going to buy some ice cream to go with it. Yeah, beautiful. Okay, so an increase in price of a substitute good or service. So say for example, you know, an ice block. If that goes up in price, screw that. Let's buy the ice cream. Okay, if you see some more ads on TV for your ice cream, boom, increase in demand. Tastes and preferences for ice cream increase. Oh, yes. So if people start to prefer ice cream, they love the taste of it. Okay, boom, ice cream, love it. Yes, increase in demand. As I was saying before, if you believe the price of ice cream will be higher in the future, you'll buy it now. And if consumers expect their income will be higher in the future, they'll buy it now too. Okay, because they know more money is coming into their pocket in the future. Okay, here's how we illustrate an increase in demand. Okay, boom. We have got price and quantity down here. Our demand curve, just a line like that, D1. Okay, make sure you label it D and D1 and do these arrows. So what's happening here is that there's a shift to the right in the demand curve. Okay, boom, that's an increase in demand. Decrease in demand. Okay, decrease in income, increase in taxes, increase in a price of a complement good or service. Okay, everything's going up. Decrease in price of a substitute. Your ice block is now cheaper. Boom, buy the ice block. Decrease in advertising for ice cream. Okay, you won't see any cool ads on TV. Taste and preferences for ice cream decrease. Don't know how that's possible. I love ice cream. Okay, boom. But, you know, economics. Consumers believe the price of ice cream will be lower in the future. So they will wait until the price goes down and then they'll buy it. Okay. See, consumer expectations. 
All right. And if you expect your income to be lower in the future, you're going to decrease your demand now. Makes sense? I knew it. Cool. Okay, here's a illustrating a decrease in demand. Boom, demand's going backwards to D1. Okay, price, quantity, D, D1. Boom. Yes, I knew it. Oops. <laughs> okay, so if you're still unsure about quantity demanded and demand, just Facebook me. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Twitter. Okay. If you're not in my class and you're watching YouTube from around the world, I can be found here. Facebook.com slash Broser. Okay. The kids call me Broser. Or Mr. Pietzkiewicz. <laughs> and this is just Teddy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So there's also an online quiz. I put it in the video description. Boom, make sure you do it, please. Thank you. And to end this lovely video, we're going to do a quote on a famous economist, Milton Friedman. Okay? I am favor of cutting taxes under any circumstances and for any excuse, for any reason, whenever it's possible. Okay? Who was Milton Friedman? He was an American economist, statistician, and author, University of Chicago. Love it for more than three decades. The Nobel Memorial Prize in Economic Sciences. Man, that's awesome. I wish I I get that one day, but who knows? <laughs> Consumption analysis, monetary history and theory, and the complexity of stabilization policy. Wow, this sounds pretty boss. Cool. Milton Freeman, Google him. The man. Alright. Peace out. This is Broser, Mr. Pietkiewicz doing his first video ever on quantity demanded and demand. Have a nice weekend.